What's up everyone? Today we have a, a steel on here, but this video is going to be about how to uh, gap a coil. So lots of different ways. I'm going to do a very easy way. Requires absolutely no tools, but I'll tell you the proper way. Or if you want to buy the tools, which trust me, it's not all that much and it's pretty inexpensive to begin with. In addition to that, I'll go over some reasons why you need to regap your coil, what potential problems of an improperly gap coil. So if you're having some of those problems, stay tuned to the end. We'll figure it out together. Having said that, so this machine needs a new coil. I know this is a blower, but this is pretty much the same for any of these machines that have these types of coils. This is not a point in a uh, condenser system. This is a, just a straight up, they, there's no points in condensers. So if you're looking for that, search elsewhere. Some of them might be useful for you, but majority of it probably not. Now, on here, there's a magnet. On this particular one, it's on this side. You could tell because, well, it holds. So the magnet, when you first put it on, you kind of don't want it to be facing the coil. The coil's going to go right here. That's only because it's just going to make your life a little more difficult. So if you can avoid it, do so. Turn the engine around. Pretty much that's the only place there should be a magnet, so it should be fine. Next, so this is the point where it kind of gets to where the no tools. If you ever get those people that come knocking at your door, or maybe a realtor, I don't know, someone who just gives out a lot of business cards that you really don't want anymore, keep them, put them in a section of your house, and take that business card, or you could do what we're doing. You could take a couple pieces of paper, fold it up. It needs to be thicker business card, you know, thickness. They're thinner, they're thicker than normal sheets of paper. So find something along those lines. In addition to that, you can take a 10,000 fewer gauge. That's the tool that you would be using to do this next part. But a paper is easier or a business card, whatever you want to use. And let's be honest, it's, it's going to get the same job done. So don't worry about it. Also, having said that, I'm going to be doing this to 10 thousandths of an inch. If yours is larger, there's not a whole lot of them out there. 95% of this is going to be yours. If you just have a little mower or a blower or a weed eater or anything like that, chances are you're going to be fine. Now, if you heavily modified your engine, your gap is going to have to be widened a little bit usually. But majority of all lawn equipment out there, 10 thousandths is going to be more than adequate. Let's get started. Will you take off your coil if you did have to? Maybe this is the one of the reasons why you're doing this because you had to replace it. Sometimes you get these little isolating rings or washers. Make sure you use them because they're there for a purpose. You don't want to be grounding it out because this very well might be grounding itself out if you don't use it and you're never gonna have spark. So don't do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this on loose. I'm not gonna tighten the screw up at all. Just enough to kind of make sure it stays on there, but not tight. We have it on. As you can tell, it's loose. It was gonna move up and down. The holes that are in there allow for some play because you do have to adjust it. Now, you take your 10 thousands or your business card, or in our case, paper, and we're going to put it like so, and move it so the magnet is starting to touch the coil and the magnet should suck the coil down so it's pretty much stuck in there. So now, unlike before, when I could move it, now the magnet's holding it down. At that point, we're going to tighten these screws and we pretty much are done, but let's go ahead and do that. When tightening those screws, you want to make sure that you don't over tighten because you could damage the coil. There is a torque spec. If you want to look it up for your machine, definitely do so. Google torque spec, coil, screws, mounting, whatever, and that's it. Now you turn the crank, paper falls out, and now you have a little air gap in between the coil and the magnet. The magnet should be the thickest part of the flywheel. So if it clears the magnet, you're gonna be fine. You shouldn't have anything, unless you have like rust. If you have rust, you're gonna to wanna to clean that up. You can let it self clear, 
Not a great idea, but you can. But in general, rust, you want to take it off. It has pretty much nothing to do with the actual functioning part of it. Like it's, if you have rust on your flywheel, which almost all of them will, as long as it's not caked on rust, you'll be fine. Um, caked on rust, like I said, will cause the gap to be a little minimal and you'll end up scraping. Now, like I said, there's people out there who say rust will go ahead and ruin, or not ruin, but cause your coil not to work. They don't know the theory of magnetism and how it's going to work, obviously, because that's not how it works. As long as your magnet's working and you have a gap, you're fine. Having said that, we're getting to that point where we're pretty much done. You want to connect your kills. This particular one has two wires that goes on. This is important because if you don't, then you're not, you're not going to have a way to turn it off. This will ground it out to a section of the engine or the motor or somewhere. It just needs to be grounded out. And once it's ground, there's no more spark, your machine turns off. So what happens if you have little to no gap or you don't gap it properly? Let's say you have too thin of a gap. As the engine revs up, the flywheel potentially could grow not that much but we are talking thousands of an inch so that little amount could cause it to start to rub or if it's not even barely even moving like if it's rubbing right now then that rubbing you can be damaging the coil you could be damaging the magnets you'd be damaging pretty much anything there and eventually it's going to cause it to break so don't do that now what happens if you go on the opposite end? The opposite end, if your gap is too wide, you're not gonna have enough magnetism to really create the proper amount of electricity needed to create that spark. Don't have too much, just stick with the 10,000s. Like I said, it's like, I'll even say it's like 99% of all machines out there, unless you've modified it or you have a specific machine that requires more of a gap. If you want to look it up, you can just search for your machine. It's going to be 10 majority of the time. But if it's over, you're going to have poor weak spark or no spark at all. Intermittent spark is another one. So go ahead and cinch it back down to that 10,000s. Give it a try again. I'm sure your spark will come back nice and strong. But other than that, we're good to go. This is the same for pretty much all machines. They're all exactly the same idea. Their mounting's gonna look different. The coils are gonna look different. But the idea is the same. 10 thousandths of an inch gap between the coil and the magnet. You're done. Real simple. Like I said, the tools you need are just a screwdriver, a piece of paper, your realtor's business card, or you can get that feeler gauge if you want to. Okay, well, we are about done. If you like what you see, keep watching, subscribe, follow me on Instagram at smallengine101. If you have any questions, definitely, definitely feel free to leave a comment below, and I'll catch you on the next video. You have a good rest of your day.